With the tenons ready for mortises, um, the next step is to take these rails and cut a miter in that profile on the top of it. And that's because you're going to be cutting a miter on the styles as well, and it's going to meet in that corner. Now, I already did it on the thicker rail, and the way I did that was I took my sizing block from my cove cut that I made for these first round of panels, and I cut two 45s into it and then flattened off the top. That way I could slide this over the edging, clamp it in place, and then cut a perfect 45. Um, when it comes time to make the muttons, this is going to be used for that as well because those are going to be lapped together and it becomes an invaluable little jig. So I realigned the rails on top of my styles and I measured my width and I'm still in line there which is great. And then you could see how I set the rails on top of my profile on either side. So that way I could come to the top and with that miter you could see how I'm going to be cutting the exact same miter into the style. So I could take a pencil, on the inside of that rail, I could take a pencil and mark how much of this I have to remove, as well as a mark for where that miter is going to be. I'm going to do that on all four corners. I took my rails off and you could see where those marks are left and where that miter has to be. So the first thing I'm going to do before I rip off this profile is I'm going to go through and cut a slot for all of my miters using the same process I did with this jig. So with my miter cuts in place, I now have my fence set up to rip off just this profile detail up to my miter. Now you're not going to be able to go all the way with the saw blade because if you did, you would be cutting into this piece. So I'm going to go about as far as I can and then finish off the cut with the hand saw. So with that piece cut out, you can now see how the flat edges are going to line up and how those miters are going to meet in the corners. So now I can lay out all of my mortises. And the way I like to do this is to get everything aligned and I could use a straight edge on the bottom to make sure it's lined up. And then I'm just going to trace around my tenons. Now once I have my marks, I do go through and scribe them with my gauge just to make sure that the layout's even all the way down the line. And this one is, and this is actually the mark I have left over from the mortises I drilled in the other panels. So that is also a good sign that these are all lined up. So now I'm going to drill the mortises in the two rails separately because first off, the skinnier rail has shorter mortises and since it isn't as thick, I'll have to change the setup for each, um, each style. The jig I'm using to cut these mortises is pretty rudimentary. Um, it's the same jig I use to cut the smaller panels. And it's basically just a piece of three quarter inch plywood. And then I kind of made this um, stack on either side that the piece can slide in. It's almost like a carriage. And then I have it extended out and propped up at the end. So in order to line these up and make all of these perfect, and the other four panels that I made turned out fine, is 
I have obviously my marks from where I drew for the mortise, but then I put a center line down the middle with my gauge. And as you slide this over the jig, you can see that that bit doesn't waver from side to side. And if you lower the bit, the center of it hits that center depression at every part of the mortise. So that way I can now set the depth on my drill press and just slide this up and down this carriage and cut that mortise. In order to get that right, I just had this piece of plywood on there and I would sh uh, shimmy it around a little bit until sliding it back and forth was equal and then clamped it to my work surface. So there's that finished mortise and you could see how perfectly that half inch mortise stayed in between my lines and how clean the inside of it is from that drill bit. So now I could flip this and do the two mortises on the other end. And in order to do the thicker piece I could keep the same setup. The only thing I'm going to have to do is change the depth setting on my drill because that's obviously a bigger mortise and also lower my table a little bit because it's a thicker style. So I finished up those first set of joints just by simply rounding all the tenons with a file and they slid right into those mortises. There's going to be a little bit of cleanup to do on the edges. You can see there's a slight gap but these are both going to fit. So now I can lower the table on my drill press where I have my jig over there and drill the holes for the thicker style. So that's my frame all put together and obviously these mortise and tenons are most likely not going to slide right together perfectly in all four corners every time. I had a little bit of sanding to do on each corner but nothing too major and now it's together and I have it clamped in place. And that's because usually with stuff like this sometimes I'll wait to the end to really get it to fit nicely but you need this as close you need this as close as possible to the final dimensions because when you make your muntins, you're going to be putting them on the inside of these frames and if this width or this height changes, um, they're not going to fit when it comes time to glue it up. So the next thing I did was obviously check to make sure my widths at top and bottom are right and that my lengths are right as well. And then I went through and I measured. I went through and I measured from the inside edge to the inside edge of both because that's where the lip of your muntin's going to sit and I kind of did that sporadically up and down the frame as well as vertically because if that dimension is off that means you can't make duplicates you'll have to tweak your measurements luckily for me I'm at about 31 and a 16th the whole way up and down this frame so now I could start mapping out my muntins and cutting those up now the muntins on the smaller door are pretty tiny, so I was able to keep them in one um, slab of wood and cut coves on both sides and then rip them down to their one and a half inch width, which just kind of makes things a little bit easier. Now since um, the vertical muntins on this are going to be about 75 inches, that's just not really uh, feasible for something like this. So I'm going to go ahead with some of that scrap lumber I have and rip 275 by an inch and a half muntins for the verticals. Now the horizontals are only about 33 inches and there's going to be six of them. So I think I could keep them in a block and cut those at once.
So I have my two verticals um, roughed out and you could see on both ends how it sits perfectly right up to that inner lip of that beaded router profile. So now I'm going to do the horizontals the same way by measuring the inside and cutting it but I'm going to leave those in a chunk and cut all the coves at once on those and then rip those down to that inch and a half. I have all the rough cuts for my muntins and I'm ready to change out my bits which I already did and cut that cove onto the end grain of all these boards. So like before I put it in there and lined it up with a straight edge with that bearing so that my fence is set at the right spot. I also took that original setup block I made and realigned this cove cutter to that block. Once that was done, I ran a test piece through, and even once you run the test piece through, you're going to have to chop off the bottom because this does leave a groove, and then I tested it on my panels. So that's going to line up perfectly, the test piece. It's flush on top, and the cove fits over my profile perfectly, so now I could just start cutting all those coves into my boards. In order to cut these coves, I made this right angled jig. And this is basically something I made out of scrap. I had half inch MDF laying around my shop and I doubled up the layers on the edge. Once I was done, I ran it through my table saw to get it perfectly square. Then I added this throwaway piece on the front so that when it runs into your bit, you could change out this piece without wrecking the jig. And that will just slide along the fence and make this cut much safer because you won't have a skinny piece of wood that might get caught in the bit. I've got both of the ends cut on both of these boards. So now I left my fence at that inch and a half from when I was cutting the vertical muntins and I could send this through. Now each of these boards should yield about four and I only need six which is nice because if one of them gets messed up or you have to make some changes you'll have an extra board. The next step to this process now is going to be taking all of your parts and putting a profile on either side, that bead profile, so to get them to look like this. And then the next step will be cutting two rabbits out of the bottom and that's where the glass will sit on these divided light panels. I followed the same steps that included putting my beaded profile bit in there, realigning my fence with a straight edge, testing it with my sizing block, and then running a test piece through to make sure it matches the profile on all of my pieces I already cut. Now these muntins are pretty thick because they match the style of that older door, but sometimes you get really skinny ones. And an example of that are the ones on this uh, older window in my shop. Those are pretty thin. So routing either side of that sort of piece of wood is could be fairly dangerous. So you make a jig similar to this one. It's the same sort of jig I made for my right angle, just out of half inch MDF. I squared it up and I put a backer on it so that this will hold it in place when it's up against the fence and you can keep your hands away from that bit. Now I am not need it for these because these are pretty thick but it also comes with these adjustable bolts so this top piece can rise and lower so if you have a thin mutton you could raise this and put that groove underneath these and clamp this in place and make it extra safe for those thinner cuts. So now that everything's in place, I'm going to take all of my pieces and run them through using this jig.
So with the molding on the top sides of these muttons, I can now cut these two rabbits for the glass on the bottoms. So I put my dado stack in there with my sacrificial fence and I use my original sizing block which has that rabbit on there to set everything up. So now I could send both of these through. Before I can start dry fitting these muntins into the door, I have to remove a piece of the edge of this so that it could go over that molding. So this is what one of those looks like before that piece is removed, and this is what it looks like afterwards. So on the longer ones, I just marked and cut it out with my bandsaw, which is why it's so rough because they wouldn't fit my table saw, my ceiling is not tall enough. So I did that on both ends and now I could put it into the frame. So that's what the two long vertical muntins look like in my frame. And you could see in the corner how nicely all those grooves match up. So the verticals I'm going to end up taking out and I'm going to cut that little piece of wood off of my six horizontals. And then once the six horizontals are in place, I could square everything up to the size openings I need for my lights and then start putting where I'm going to put the verticals on the six horizontals because these muttons are going to be lap jointed together and I'll have to cut 12 laps in order to get everything to fit. So I'm going to be using my tenoning jig to cut those little notches out and I have 3 8 inch stacked dado blade risen to 3 8 inch because that's what that groove is going to be that cut it out. And then I had this scrap left over from one of the edges of my mutton stock and that's what it looked like before I ran it through and that's what it looks like afterwards. So it cuts that perfect little bit I need off and then I could go test this on my frame to make sure that that's the right depth because if you cut too much off you'll have a gap between the rabbit on your door which will be seen right here. So I'm going to go test fit that but I'm pretty sure this is about perfect and I could start running all those pieces through my setup here. So as I cut my horizontals, I'm going to place them as I go, and I have rough marks on either side of this frame to um, a general spacing of where these should go.